It's Preptober. Um, I think when I post this, it will be like like two days from NaNoWriMo, which is um, okay. <laughs> I haven't processed that one yet. If you're new, hi. I am Alyssa. I am a writing a book. I am a writing a book, I'm Italian. Um, I just finished up a revision that I'd been doing for like a month and a half, two days ago. And so, and I was gonna take a little bit longer of a break, but oh, NaNoWriMo's next week. Okay, and then I was looking at my outline, but I was looking at it and it's not nothing, but it's not something. It's a dual POV, so my two main characters their characters are fleshed out. A couple other people have names, but that's pretty much it. Um, so there's a lot of character work that needs to happen. And also there's, I just need some scenes. That one that I have right now is essentially one sentence per Save the Cat beat. That's the plot structure that I, I use to outline. I don't follow it like to the T, but it's just helpful because I like that kind of flow of story. So this week, it's also like the last week of October, so it's like Halloween, like fall, like we're doing fall things, everyone in the community. And I'm like, that's really wonderful. And I'm going to be a part of that. I want to live my life and like have a fall time, but also like we, I need to outline this book. Um, also just be kind of getting my space ready for NaNoWriMo. So I have... I bought some more lighting for this room because it's going to be dark all of the time and I want to be well lit because last video I had, it was all fine, but there were some points where I was like, girl, the ISO, she's all the way up there. If you don't know, I'm also a videographer in my job. So sometimes I just cringe a little bit at the poor lighting in this room. Really, I'm just taking you through this week that this is the last week before um, NaNoWriMo, where you will be seeing quite a bit of me. Also, I just wanted to say from my last video, I really appreciate all of the solidarity against cabbage because cabbage is a menace and I'm glad we all agree on it. If you don't know what we're talking about, just go watch the last video, finishing act three of my book. I have a lot of energy. I don't know where this is coming from. Hippin' and hopping in. I, good morning. Everyone, Dolly Parton and Miley Cyrus came out with a version of um, Wrecking Ball and I need you to go listen to. I just drank some sparkling water, which was a mistake. Don't let me drink sparkling water in the morning. If you see me drinking sparkling water in the morning, yell at me because actually first get out of my house and then yell at me. Something that I've always done, little story time about me is when I was in school and I had tests specifically for like history, that subject, um, or like sometimes English, anything where you had to like memorize or like understand a whole plot of things. Or I would just talk through out loud the whole history of France in the 1400s. Like that's how I would study for tests. I actually made some educational raps, which will never, well, they have seen the light of day, but now they're back in the darkness and will never be seen again. And that really helped me to just like know that I knew it. Cause sometimes it's like, I know it, but I don't know that I know it. And so then I like psych myself out. Does that make any sense? Anyway. And what I was, I was on the phone with Cameron, my sort of critique partner, sort of, I don't know. She's more of like an in the moment critique partner. Like she hasn't actually read my last book yet, Cameron. She's very busy. Anyway, and you know how it's sometimes you have phone calls with people where it's like a podcast where you're just like become a podcast. Well, that's what I became. I became a podcast and I literally just talked through everything I knew about this story and just so many things were 
incorrect. It helps me to identify what do I not know? Because once I get to a certain point, I'm like, oh, I have no idea what happens next. And I have no idea why they per that person does that. Um, I don't really have, I've never been that person who can write on my phone. I have maybe written one scene on my phone ever, just now. Um, outlined essentially the first scene. I think I maybe did a little bit more detail than I need to, but actually I felt good about it. Um, and it was on my phone and it actually felt so freeing. But I think the difference is that I'm very intentional with my writing time most of the time. Like if I'm gonna write, it's because I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna put my playlist on. I'm usually gonna set a timer and I'm gonna write. And that's what I found to work best for my concentration and everything. But it was the idea of being able to just like in between five minutes here or there at work, outline one scene at a time and not have to leave the story too much consistently instead of checking Instagram, outline a scene, right? I'll check in tonight and let you know how the sporadically outlining during the day situation worked. Hopefully well, we'll just have to see. I'll see you later, have a great day. This is actually kind of crazy. Look how much better that lighting is. These are the lights I put up. Kind of a weird formation. I don't know. I just had, it was, my plugins are in a weird spot and then I really just like wanted them over here but then I was like, well, there's so much left of the string. But like this is so much better. That whole updating my notes in between or like outlining in the cracks of time Sounds very like an episode of Doctor Who, but really, really worked very well for me. It was nice because, let's be honest, I did it when I was going to the bathroom and everyone goes on their phone in the bathroom, right? Like that, I'm pretty sure that everyone does that. This might get me like canceled. I don't know. There, I can't be the only one. I'm drinking sparkling water in the morning again. Going from, I've been revising for so long now, um, since, honestly, I think probably March. And so I've been in this mindset of like, everything has to make sense and everything has to be perfect. And like, I mean, that's just kind of the difference between drafting and revising. But as I'm like bullet pointing out, I'm like, no, this like does work. Like I'm not running into these huge problems because Problems are what you find out after you write the first draft usually. Um, like the first draft when I'm writing I'm like, everything makes sense, like this is so great, like we love to see it. It's so easy, especially if you're coming off of revising to look at all of the potential problems rather than like how exciting the book is. And when I was writing like, okay, this next scene this happens, this next scene this happens, like it was so exciting because it was coming so easily and it's been so long since something just like came so easily like that. I don't want to say that I don't enjoy revision because, well, it's not my favorite thing to do. <laughs> like if revision was the only thing that was involved in writing a book, I probably wouldn't want to write books forever. But I like what revisions do to a book. I like the process of seeing things come to life. Like I like doing the revision sometimes, but I don't like thinking about them. <laughs> You know what my least favorite piece of like writing phrase is? Is the one that's like, if you don't absolutely love every single part of the process, like you shouldn't be a writer. And I'm like, girl, no. I feel like I've seen like very famous published authors say that. I think what they're trying to get at is like, don't think that writing is all rainbows and butterflies and just writing first drafts and getting to keep everything that you want to keep. Like, I think that that, like generally I think that that's good but when it comes to like you're gonna love every single part of it or you shouldn't do it at all like what a horrible mindset I think about every single thing in my life that I enjoy and there is nothing that I enjoy and just love every single part of like I love reading I don't love that my hands get cramped when I read for too long or that my eyes get sore or that feeling that I can't really engage with society for if I'm in the middle of a really good book. Like, I don't love that part of reading, but I love reading and I'm still gonna do it. 
And I don't love when I my heart gets broken, but I kind of do, but I don't at the same time. I don't love waiting years for books to be released. There's a lot of things I don't love about reading, but I still love reading. Like, no, no. We shouldn't just do things because we just love every second of them. There should be a part of it that you love, right? Anyway, I think it is exactly a week from November 1st. Um, and I yesterday really actually boosted my confidence quite a lot. I'll like scroll and show you how much I wrote because like if you start, can you see that? Like this is act one. I won't actually show you. Like I feel like that's a lot of outlining. I feel like that's a longer outline than I've ever had. Well, that might be a lie. so excited for NaNoWriMo like I'm just so excited to actually write this book like there's so many things I'm so excited about and it's exciting to be in a fresh spot again where it's like this whole book is in front of me you know and sometimes that feels very overwhelming but right now it just feels exciting because I feel like I'm gonna like these characters a lot and I'm really excited to like get in their head and meet them and that sounds it sounds like I'm insane What a cute angle of me. Let's just flip in here and see the first name we see. Rocky! Yes! how things get so messy. You guys see me clean every week. You see me. Everyone, I come bearing news. Here I was thinking we would maybe make it to November, but no, welcome. I like, I don't hate the snow, but I just know it's now going to be here until April. Time to get out my coat. <laughs> time of year which is 90% of the year for me because I live in the tundra where the snow likes to overexpose me okay I need to show you this so I was at my parents house last night and I found all of these old this one specific notebook I'm gonna show you 
This notebook, I've been looking for it earlier in the year because the first book I wrote in high school, it was a dystopian, like huge world building, very, very complicated, like political system. Everybody had like a double identity. There was a whole caste system. Like it was a very advanced plot. I just look at how worn this thing is. And it has a lot of really classic quotes on there. Um, that it just really just took me right back. I knew in this notebook was where I did all of my character sheets and all of my outlines. I was so good at outlining and how did I know how to do this? She's better at outlining than I am. Let's just start. Can you see this? We have like their name, their num- like I think the how old they are and then it says no number because in this system everybody has a number so most people like have a number right and then I have on this outline their birthday I don't know and and I don't know any of my characters birthdays right now which I actually want to get back to doing that and then I have a section for their flaws their family their physical appearance their enemies their fears their friends their acquaintances like girl their personality has a whole paragraph and their backstory has a whole paragraph. Now I do something similar to this for my main characters. This is not a main character. This is a random woman in the book. 14 year old Alyssa was putting in the work. Um, gosh. And then we get into the chapter outlines, which, so this is for chapter 12 and 13. What? This is longer than my entire outline for my book right now. So on it, we have this little, like where it is in the plot structure diagram like good morning Jeez, why are there so many lines and there were maps there were maps of all the rooms like the dorms <laughs> she was not an artist okay like look at that yeah anyway so that was my existential crisis of the day the other thing I'm gonna do is start to prep for NaNoWriMo with um, videos. So I, I'm going to prep, like I'm gonna look through a bunch of music that I wanna use. I'm gonna prep my thumbnail template so that it's easy to pop one in. Um, I am gonna prep my, like, my sequences in Premiere so that I am eliminating as much like tedious things. Do you wanna come? Do we wanna get coffee together? Oh my gosh, that's so cute of us, okay. Hey there, can I do a grande pumpkin spice latte and then a lemon loaf as well? Yep, Alyssa. For you. Sounds good, thank you. Almost forgot that I had to pay for this. Okay, there you go. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Yeah, you too. playlist for Project Gas Station. Have I said the name of this project yet in this? Yeah, my project for NaNoWriMo is called Project Gas Station because that's, I know more about the book now, but originally that was all I knew was that a central setting of the book was a gas station. Feels right. That's the kind of chaotic energy I'm bringing into this book. The way that I make Spotify playlists for my books is literally by going through every playlist I've ever made and picking out songs. Is that how most people make playlists? Like, how do you all do this? I have some staple writing songs that I have in like almost every one of my playlists. The soundtrack from Doctor Who seasons, roughly like four through eight. Also the entire soundtrack of the show Broadchurch, which also has David Tennant in it. Honestly, it's just like good suspense music because it's not so intense that you're being jarred. And they're like eight minute songs that are very like repetitive, but not boring. Like they set a really good suspenseful background. So I always have a couple songs from that. Anyway, I am finished the playlist. It is about, yeah, it's like four hours long. It's like 70 songs essentially.
morning. It's the next day. It's actually, if you're watching this upon posting, it's probably like an hour before you're seeing this. Before being a tuber, a, a tuber, I would watch these and be like, oh, I need to do all these things. Like that's how you prepare is you do a playlist and an outline and characters and blah, 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 right? So I don't want you to do that. I want you to think about what is it gonna feel like on day one when you have to open that page and write that book. If you were to do it right now, what would you want to have prepared? Would you want a playlist that's already ready with the vibes? Or do you not even need that? Do you wanna know exactly what's happening on the first scene or do you wanna surprise yourself? Do you wanna meet these people for the first time or already know them, you know? And I, I don't think either of those are wrong. Take what you will from this video. So I wanna leave you with that, but I will see you in just a couple days for NaNoWriMo.